the next part in this training on Swix ECR advanced programming and the night service function. Uh, thanks for the feedback I've already had. Tom's already pointed out there's a security issue or a potential security issue with the script that was demonstrated in the last video. Yes, um, we need to discuss this and we'll talk about this in the last section when we look at deploying this for real. We'll want to put some sort of access control so not everyone in the company and everyone outside the building can turn your night service on and off. So, um, but thanks for pointing that out and uh, we will discuss that. I promise. If I forget, I'm sure someone will email me. So we have a database behind our program. The reason we're using the database is because we need to store the night service status and the night service extension number needs to be stored permanently and external to the script because any variables we create within the script are runtime variables and are all deleted once the script is finished. Now there is, as already mentioned, the persistent variables project on the Swix forms which you uh, can use and it will accomplish the same task as this but the whole idea of, uh, behind this training is to take you behind the scenes and show you what's going on in the background. So we're going to create a database for this project. Uh, hopefully you've already installed SQL Management Studio Express on your server. If you have, you will find it in your programs file. I'm on my VM machine to run this demonstration now. So we go to SQL 2012 and Management Studio. Now, when the program launches, it's going to ask me for authentication to log on. You did have an SA account uh, created when you installed SQL. You created an SA account under mixed mode with a username and password. And we could use that, or I'm just going to use full admin authentication because I'm logged on to my server with the Swix admin account. That's the account that installed Swixware. So I have full access. So I'm just going to use standard Windows authentication for this project and I'm going to connect. I'm now talking direct to SQL Server and if I open up the databases you'll see we already have the IP PBX database there. That is Swix. A warning, under no circumstances must you edit or muck around with that database. If you do, I promise you'll break Swix. And because I have full admin rights at the moment, I can go in there and start really mucking things up. Please do not edit this database. You must not. You will break switch. So that's the warning. That's the help warning. So we're going to go to databases and we're going to create a new database for this project. And not being very inventive, I'm going to call this database Night Service. Yeah, not exactly rocket science, is it? So there's my night service database. I now need to create a table. And so I'll right click on table to create a new table. And I need to store some data in this uh, database. So the first piece of data I'm going to store is the night service. Is it on or off? So I'm going to create a field called night on. And the night on field really is only going to contain a binary normally on. 0, 1, off, vice versa. Um, so I, I could muck around and I could have different data types for different fields, but I just want to keep this nice and simple for now, so we're going to call this a var char. A var character, 50 lengths, uh, not efficient way of storing data at all in the database. It takes up far too much space for storing a single one or off. But hey, I'm not here to design a complex database. It's just going to make this very simple for everyone. So uh, the other field I need to remember permanently is the night service telephone number. So I will just call this night number. And again, I will create a var char. So it will drop down as I did on the previous one. Just type, start typing var char here. Uh, the last one here, allow nulls. This tells SQL whether you will actually allow a record to be entered that has no entry at all. Uh, when I come to deploy this, I probably don't want to allow nulls in there because that could cause a problem. Or I deal with the problem inside my script. There are lots of ways of doing this. For the moment, and so I know the script works first time, I am going to allow nulls, but I may want to come back and switch this off later on. 
final field I'm going to have is a reference. It's just an index field. Uh, again, this is a var char. And I am going to allow nulls. Uh, I might use this field and I might change it and put some other data in there. So it's just a, a reference field for now. And that's it. So all I need to do is store my database and store my database table rather. Like that. So I click the save button and I need to give it a name. And in my code and examples, I've called the table night. And we can close that. I need to put some data in the table. Now you can't see the table yet. I just need to refresh the view. So F5, uh, there's my night table, and I need to put some data in there. So we'll just uh, edit it, and nights is going to be a 0 or a 1. I'm going to put a 0 in there for now. My night telephone number, I can just put any old random number in there for now. And reference um, 1. That's it. All I did was press tab to go through each field, and that's it. Uh, my data is in the database. So we're nearly ready to go. At the moment, the access to the database is only admin access. So we have uh, Windows Authentication, which has full access to everything, and the SA account, which has full access to everything. Now, when I come to writing my own script, I don't really want to be writing data to and from SQL using a full admin account, because if someone starts mucking around my script, they could end up writing data into this not-to-be-touched database. So I want to create a security account just has access to the night service database and nothing else. So I open up the security tab down here and I go to logins and I right click and create a new login. Um, my login needs a username so I have a username in my code examples called Swix Night and this isn't a Windows account, this is an SQL account, so we're going to use SQL authentication. And I'm not going to use complex passwords, uh, the default on the uh, domain. So I'll switch enforce password policy off, so I can use any password I want. And again, to make the code nice and easy, I'm just going to give the same username and password. So Swix Knight is the username, and Swix Knight is also the password. And the default database for this user is going to be the night service database. And what I need to go now is to user mappings and for the night service database Swix Knight is a user and he has read, write and that's about all he really needs, read and write access. And that's it. We're now ready to start writing our code and access the database here. And in the next one, we're going to look at reading and writing data into the database at a very basic level. And then we'll start building up the script. So that's it for now. Thank you very much. And as usual, if you've got any comments, please use the feedback. And I'll see you soon.